Welcome to London, Mr. Spieler. It is an honor and a pleasure. It's an honor and a pleasure for us. That's what I meant. <laughs> Nearly all your films star men rather than women. Are you against actresses? Not as often as I'd like to be. <laughs> but personally, I think it all stems back to the days when I made my first cowboy film and I had the actress Victoria V. <laughs> foisted on me. She was named after your Queen Victoria. And not so damn long after, either. Uh, <laughs> and, but, oh, God, she was big. I mean, everybody's entitled to be big, but she abused the privilege. She was big! <laughs> 36 inches! Each one! <laughs> Oh, God, she couldn't sing, she couldn't dance, she couldn't act. What could she do? With difficulty, stand up. <laughs> I remember at one point, the uh, hero, you know, he had an arrow shot into his leg because the Indians were chasing him. They hated him, you know. They hated him from three pictures back. <laughs> That'll show you how much. And she was cradling his head between here, anyway. <laughs> oh, God, he thought he'd gone deaf. <laughs> like a pawnbroker's sign. <laughs> anyway, what happened was, she looked at the arrow and she said, I'm gonna pull it out. <laughs> and it might hurt. You'd better bite on something. <laughs> well, she pulled and he bit. <laughs> And I got a rocket because I found out she was the producer's niece. Oh, I see. She got her job through relatives. So did your queen. <laughs> anyway, we got her a uh, Stetson and a uh, Spurs and a Hopalong chastity belt. She looked like a uh, cowgirl. We got a few little... Are you what? She looked like a cowgirl. She looked more like a girl cow. <laughs> But fortunately, on the uh, film, we had a hero who was an ex-Marine. God, he was gorgeous. And uh, <laughs> in a virile sort of way, you understand. And he was very butch. And I remember he was built like a brick shipyard. He really was. Uh, he won the Golden Gloves, you know, the tournament. They were gorgeous. They came up to here. <laughs> and he was so witty. And I should never forget the first time I met him in the Hollywood office there. I said, where's the water cooler? He said, in Alaska. <laughs> right here, doesn't it? He was a gorgeous boy, he really was. You made several films with W.C. Fields. I made his first color film. That was Lulu Bell <laughs> with Mae West. <laughs> well, we have a clip. Oh, wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Bartender, uh, give me two fingers of red eye, will you? Uh, thank you. Medicinal purposes only, I understand. <laughs> but the two fingers don't go anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely, thank you, Tom. <laughs> yeah. And a glass of water, Mr. Little John? Uh, thank you, Shiny. You remembered. <laughs> Say, uh, how's the wine? Uh, better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, young man, I have just been involved in a fracas. Veritable montage of fisticuffs. Who was you fighting, Mr. Little John? Uh, you heard of Mark McGoolies, the Milwaukee Mauler? Why, well, sure. His mother. <laughs> knocked her down. No, I knocked her down. Uh, oh, yes, I did. I did, you know, I, I kicked her. Hard. Uh, that must have hurt. No, it didn't. I had my boots on. <laughs> Nearly stopped my great toe. Well, hello there, handsome. Yeah, why, well, jump in the house of fat as I live and breathe heavily. Never seen a thing like that since I was weaned. I've a little John, ma'am. Well, we all have our problems. <laughs> Don't think I've had the pleasure. And you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. <laughs> Her name's Angelica. Angelica! Oh, what are you from a suppilation? 
My friends call me Angel for short, but not for long. And it's true what they say about you, ma'am. You're a scarlet woman. You're cheap. You're common. You're promiscuous. You're permissive. Yeah, I like that in a girl. <laughs> Allow me, ma'am, to press my eager lips against your dainty digits. What are you trying to do? Dig my diamonds out with your nose? I haven't had a hell like that since last night. Yeah, four aces and a king. <laughs> Playing poker. <laughs> Put that hand back in the goldfish bowl, will you dear? Watch it, Sonny. Yeah, Sonny? Why, ma'am, I'll have you know I'm not a fuddy duddy. I'm not a moon calf. Have you know my father was a mayor? What was your mother? A jockey? <laughs> well, have you know my father fought the last of the Mohicoans? My father made the Brooklyn Bridge. My father made the Empire State Building. What did your father ever make? Look me over, big boy. Look me over. Yeah. Now, I'm going up to my room for a little scotch and so far. You follow me? So long, boys. Get a load of that walk. Yeah, it reminds me. I must get my watch fixed. Yeah. So long, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a reputation for being unconventional and for doing your own thing. Oh, well, I believe you should do your own thing. I've always felt that, you know. Because, I mean, sometimes if Bruce and I want to have a martini, you know, we just have one. We, we don't even fly the seaplanes down to the little <laughs> island or anything. You know? <laughs> oh, sometimes when I'm feeling reckless, I have after eight minutes at seven o'clock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. <laughs> and, in your and in your sequel to the Carol Baker film, Baby Doll, you've reversed the roles and the woman child becomes a man child. Yes. And you've called it Baby Boy. Baby Boy. Oh, and the lead in this, this boy is gorgeous. This boy, you watch. Oh, he's gorgeous. Well, we have the closing scene from Baby Boy. And good night and thank you, Mr. Spieler. Great honor. <laughs> that voice anywhere. <laughs> Uncle Rastus. It's not so, Uncle Rastus. It's your intended Lucy Comfort. Let me in. I can't let you into my booty wall on account of I'm wearing my pajamas. <laughs> well, for Ryan's sake, baby boy, why can't you open the door in your pajamas? Because I don't have a door in my pajamas. <laughs> What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get out of bed now, and I'm gonna leave my security blanket here. <laughs> and I'm gonna trip over to the door, and I'm gonna let you in. And when I say come in, I'm gonna unlock it. When I say come in, you can come in and not before. So there. <laughs> right. You can come on in now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing sitting on my balloon? Get off my balloon there. What do you think playing at? Could I just have one little kiss? No, you can't have a kiss. You know I'd be sitting on my bed anyway, because I don't believe in that sort of thing. We're well, not before marriage anyway. And ain't none too sure about afterwards either. <laughs> but baby boy, I can't wait forever. I'm a getting old. You sure are. Still ain't none of us getting any younger. I should be 20 myself tomorrow. <laughs> ain't none of us getting any older either. Ain't you got me nothing by birthday? Yeah. I bought you some nice presents. Some nice <laughs> presents? Well, lickety spit and chippity chop. What you get me, Lucy? What you get me? Well, now, I got you a new teddy bear. <sighs> <laughs> a new teddy 
Baya da Baya. <laughs> what else you getting, Miss Kelly? What else you get me? And a woolly panda. <gasps> <laughs> a woolly a panda. <laughs> One. You mean to tell me you never got me no muff in the mule? Muff in the mule? You already got Crump at the camel. I trot on him as I come in. <gasps> now, you leave Crumpet alone! <laughs> Otherwise, your eyes will go weak. <laughs> now, I told you about that before. Otherwise, I'm going to say I am dependent on you. I'm sick of all this. If I had any sense, I'd be marrying Elmer Catrap. He's old and ugly. He ain't so. He got nice wavy hair. Well, I got nice wavy hair. Well, he got strong white teeth. Well, I got strong white teeth. Well, he got brains and intelligence. Well, I got strong white teeth. <laughs> well, if my daddy was here, he'd horsewhip you, haven't he had a horse? Your daddy. Your daddy. That's all you talk about is your daddy. I don't reckon you never had a mammy. I did so too have a mammy. Just don't like to think of her, that's all. Just don't like to remember that night when she was stood on the railroad track and the rain a coming down and the wind and the howling. I said, Mammy, move, Mammy, move. And the train was getting near and near. The trains were running then. <laughs> and I said, Mammy, Mammy. I said, move, Mammy, and the train's getting nearer and nearer. And the winds are howling. She's just staring out into space like she was deranged. And I said, I could hear this train getting nearer. And I said, Mammy, move. Mammy, please, it's your little baby crying. The train's getting nearer. And I said, Mammy, move, move, move. What happened? She moved. <laughs> I am the pionder's chair. Baby boy? Don't do that. Oh, sorry. When we marry, you're gonna grow up so fast. Grow up? What do you mean, grow up? <laughs> Don't you even know what grown up is? Well, a grown up is, I me taking your hand like this. I put my arm around mm. you like this. Mm. And I kissing you like this. <laughs> You might well laugh. <laughs> you better go out there. <laughs> Who, -wee? Who ever so? We. Now you see here, Andy Pandy, old boy, old pal. <laughs> you ain't gonna see in that chair no more. Why not, baby boy? Tell me, why not? Cause it's Golly's chair. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>